Hey, good morning. I wanted to make this little video part because today I just saw someone else that had the same issues as me and I'd been contemplating um, posting what T'Challa and I had gone through uh, since September uh, with a very sudden uh, issue of him developing uh, seizure episodes and wanted to put this out there for people now that I've come across someone else uh, that's had the same things not sure what's going on or what it is but figured a little video would be better than the uh, immensely long post this would have taken so a little history back in September uh, mid-September we went on a trip to Mammoth California uh, we stopped in Park City Utah it's when we first noticed uh, his issue which was a lethargicness just a you know not really quite with it um, just slow and at first just thought eh, maybe it's altitude or something despite gone to going to altitude many times just figured maybe been in the car a lot um, you know who knows we'll see what happens so over the next you know, like two weeks of our trip every day it seemed like he had this kind of morning sickness nothing real major just yeah, slow and whatnot. So, spent time in the mountains, then went down to San Diego. Thought, well, if it's uh, altitude, being at sea level is uh, a great way to uh, prove that. And even down there, he still had it. So, just kind of monitored it and came back um, to where we we're staying in Michigan and took him to the vet, did blood work. They found nothing wrong. Um, every day, he still. Um, had this kind of like slowness, this lethargicness to him um, and didn't really think much of it because he was normally fine throughout the day. Um, T'Challa has been on a raw diet uh, for about three and a half years. Both my dogs have been and have had you know no issues. We use um, a raw food co-op uh, by the name of Ross Wells Titan and we go back and forth between the beef and chicken blends. Um, so nothing changed in the diet, pretty consistent uh, throughout that. So I waited on blood work and nothing came back. And I said, well, he's still having this kind of weird, you know, issue every day. You know, what do we do next? Um, during that time, his episode um, which was about lunchtime, um, was getting worse. Um, it went from just being lethargicness to being um, trying to stand up and being very out of it, um, almost falling off the bed, just having a look in his eyes and in his face, um, like someone who was diabetic and their blood sugar was about 20 or 30. Totally loopy, totally out of it. Um, it escalated like the next day to where he just didn't know where he was and tried to run through the walls and everything in the house between him and the wall. So that was when, you know, I booked an ER visit and that ER visit, um, was with the same place that we had scheduled an MRI because the vet said this sounds neurological we can't find anything biological so let's have a, ne a neurologist you know evaluate him um, I didn't feel it was appropriate to wait another two weeks for the appointment so I went to the ER and did it and scheduled the MRI um, they gave him anticonvulsives they didn't do anything uh, we did the MRI and spinal tap, and there was some other blood work. Uh, they found nothing, no history of anything, uh, no issues uh, whatsoever. But, and here's the important thing, uh, he still wanted and still thought that he was having seizures and said, well, let's put him on phenobarbital anyway, uh, despite having any real conclusive. So when a vet tells you something, there's nothing wrong with taking a step back and using some common sense um, 
yeah, doctors don't know everything, uh, even human doctors. Um, but I wasn't comfortable with that and didn't think that was appropriate. So we went back to the vet for more tests. Um, more and more tests we did. His blood has been to UC, <laughs> I think LA, um, you know, a dozen different, you know, hospitals, um, colleges for studies, uh, analyzing, um, none of which have found even the slightest thing wrong with him. So through this, through doing all these consultations, through being told to just put him on medication um, and whatnot, I had gotten the idea that it was linked to his diet. And I told the neurologist this, I was like, if he's having a seizure, and these seizures were like an hour long, 45 minutes, um, and they were the same time every day. And I was like, when in the history of seizures have they been consistent every day, same time, and, and this long? And of course the answer was never. Okay, so we're dealing with something new, potentially. Um, so I had thought up, well, why don't I try a very bland diet? Because it seems to be linked with his food. Because his seizure time would change based on when I fed him. So I said, okay, let me concoct a uh, boiled rice and vegetables and I left out the chicken so I said let's do no chicken let's just do rice and vegetables and let's see what happens and the very first day he didn't have an issue first day I did that like noon came didn't have his issue um, and so we learned that for whatever reason a completely healthy dog that is not showing any signs of anything um, cannot eat or process protein. Uh, I started experimenting, giving him uh, like an egg a day, little bit of chicken, kind of increased it until he had an issue and then I backed off. Um, even some yogurt or cottage cheese, like a little bit seemed to be okay, but you get more, you know, more than like a, a spoonful and he has an issue. So we started experimenting with kibble. Uh, Jeffrey Head had given me some uh, Victor Multi Pro, and that seemed to work well because on you know dogs need protein, humans need protein. You can't live without protein. Your dog can't live without protein. Um, so he lost about seven pounds in a month uh, because all he was getting was rice and veggies, uh, and I was throwing like one egg in there because that didn't seem to set him off, but. Um, Jeff gave me some kibble, we tried that, and that seemed to not bother him. Um, so for the last month, he's been on Munsters milling ancient grains and fish, uh, and he's done fine with that. Uh, I'm still going to book an appointment because the vets and everyone have kind of thrown their hands up and said, we've done every test we can possibly think of. He's had like nine blood draws. Um, and each of those blood draws, there were several tests done, more and more, you know, deep dives or, or different things even. Um, so I have the healthiest dog in the world. I've spent about 10 grand, uh, maybe a little bit more, um, figuring this out and it comes down to protein. Uh, so right now he's doing okay, um, but I'm going to... Uh, book an appointment with a nutritionist to talk more and dive into it because everyone else has kind of thrown their hands up. So if you're experiencing or your dog is experiencing some sort of prolonged weird issues, you know, motor skill issues, think about the food and yeah, I'm a big believer in raw. I think it's the healthiest thing we can give them, but for whatever reason, proteins having an issue so I have to figure something else out but look at food try to eliminate protein potentially for a couple days see if that helps um, just wanted to throw this out there as to you know what we went through and what has worked for us but you know don't um, don't take my word for it to you know do do your own research and experimentation but 
this is uh, what we've gone through for the last six months. So hope it helps somebody. And yeah, 10 minutes, this would have been a really long post if typed. <laughs> Thank you.